Hi, I'm Dr. Anthony Romeo, and today we're going to demonstrate an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair, acromioplasty, and biceps tenodesis. This otherwise healthy and very active 48-year-old gentleman fell off of his mountain bike and injured his shoulder. He went through appropriate conservative treatment, and his symptoms did not improve. A magnetic resonance imaging scan demonstrates a significant bursal-sided rotator cuff tear with probable communication with the glenohumeral joint with probable communication with the glenohumeral joint. He's failed conservative management and the surgical repair should be able to get him back to all the activities that he desires. His muscles look good, the rest of the tendon looks good, and we should be able to restore this back close to his normal abilities before he had his accident. So for our portals, again, uh, our portals, we have uh, a chromion. I like to put my index finger and thumb on the anterior and posterior aspect of the joint and move the joint back and forth. I'll move my index finger to the sulcus between the clavicle and the spine, and this will give me my alignment of my joint. If I want to go straight into the joint, I can go uh, directly in that plane, but I like to come just a little bit lateral so that we have better access to the glenohumeral joint. Just off the edge of the coracoid, and then usually approximately two centimeters below the acromion, will give us the portals that we need to conduct this procedure. At the end of the procedure, we're going to perform an open bicep tenodesis through a subpectoral approach, and we'll describe that as we get to that part of the operation. Local anesthetic is helpful in the posterior aspect of the shoulder in particular, but it can also help with some hemostasis in the subacromial space. Incision, blunt scope. We'll go ahead and, without distending the joint, insert our trocar into the glenohumeral joint. Okay. So he's got a fair amount of joint fluid. We'll, wipe, we'll make sure we can see well here. As we look to the front of his shoulder, we'll back up until we see the biceps tendon, which is our lighthouse. We see a fair amount of inflammation over the top of the biceps, some uh, irritation of the labrum. We see a cord-like middle glenohumeral ligament up front. And as we look out laterally to see if there's an injury to the rotator cuff, uh, there's a significant uh, elevation here. We're going to take a closer look at this. Go ahead and hold the arm and pull on that. And it looks like we have a more than a partial tear, but a full thickness tear involving his rotator cuff tendon in this area here. We'll get a better look at that in just a minute, but we can see this also involves the biceps tendon. Here's the biceps exiting the glenohumeral joint, and we can see the tear of the supraspinatus has lifted the lateral stability of the biceps that edge is just being caught right there. And that's part of the reason why he's having so much bicep symptoms. Eighteen gauge needle. So just off the edge of the coracoid, we'll establish our first portal through the rotator interval. We'll look for that needle up front. Knife, go ahead and take our cannula. Go ahead and take that. Do we just have big cannulas up? Let's use the smaller one if we have it for now. Okay. Thank you, that's good. And we'll establish our anterior portal then we'll take the shaver and start to clean up the joint. Very inflamed.
Maybe it's not okay. It looks like he has a huge tear now. So we'll take a close look at that. Okay, so we're planning on taking care of his biceps. So we're going to go ahead and remove that at this time. So let's take an arthroscopic basket or scissors to take care of that problem. Since we're going to do this to the subpectoral region, because there's so much involvement of the biceps edge and the glenohumeral joint, we don't really need to worry about the length. We can figure that out in the subacromial space. And we just want to kind of peel this right off the edge of the labrum to make a nice smooth interface. And our last little bite here, hopefully. Shaver, please. And then we'll have the Arthur Care coming up next. Okay, Arthur Care. get out of the sub out of here pretty quickly just looking at the back of the shoulder that all looks pretty good he's got a pretty good sized tear it looks that like it's been progressed since the partial thickness tear that he had before with a split in his rotator interval as we see right there to take a closer look at his subscap and make sure that that's okay here's the upper edge of his subscap so hold the arm right there and we'll do the what's called the lever push. So holding the arm there, we'll pull back on this and see if there's any separation. And uh, there's definitely been partial injury here, so we'll have to take a closer look. So let's have the shaver back again, please. Our bicep center, we'll just kind of trim that back a little bit so it stays out of our way. So he's got this upper edge. I'm just trying to see if it's just a partial thickness injury. Okay, let's go here, like there. Pull back. It's not clear. I'm not sure I want to restrict his motion, which is what would happen here. So he's got a partial thickness tear, but the most of the integrity looks intact. With the biceps out of the way, they should be okay. So if I just trim that back a little bit, that looks pretty good now. It's an undersurface tear of his subscap. And that tissue looks pretty good. So I think we'll probably leave that alone. Clean out his rotator interval. And get a better look at his uh, subacromial space. Have the arthro care now, please. If we have to uh, turn down that suction, just let us know, Greg. It's going to make a lot of no noise.
All right. All right, let's work our way to the subacromial space. So there's our tear right there. That's the front quarter of the supraspinatus. Okay, let's have the blunt for the scope. <coughs> so when we're going into the subacromial space, we'll go through the deltoid, and once we feel the rotator cuff, we'll tilt our trocar up and feel for the anterior lateral corner of the acromion. And once we can brush against that, we know we'll be in the area uh, that we call a room with the view. And so uh, this will give us a wide open view above the rotator cuff so that we can see very nicely uh, where we need to do our surgical procedure. So we're over the top of the rotator cuff and you can see as we have throughout the entire procedure, it's very inflamed here. Eighteen gauge needle. Knife, please. All right. We'll go ahead and establish our lateral portal for the subacromial space and um, we'll start to use our shaver to make some room here. We see some significant fraying in the lateral edge of the acromion. Get this all cleaned up so we can take a close look at what we've got in the subacromial space. Our first goal is to find the lateral corner of the acromion. That kind of keeps us in our orientation. And we're going to once we have enough room to start working in this area, we'll take our radio frequency device and, and peel off the soft tissues so we can see the acromion very nicely. Okay, let's have the radio frequency device. Thank you. Let's get this over here on that edge. And we'll again establish the lateral corner. And we're just uh, defining the edges of the acromion anteriorly, going into the uh, uh <coughs> acromial clavicular joint, and making sure we have all the soft tissues off this edge so that we can be prepared to approach and repair our rotator cuff tendon. I don't know where all that's coming from, but. The uh, tear is on the anterior lateral corner, which can be a little tricky to get to sometimes because of the thickening of the coracoacromial ligament and the edge of the acromion. So it's sometimes quite helpful just to move this out of the way like we always did with traditional open surgery. Uh, it's not necessary for a good result and it can get in your way. So it's nice to prepare this and get this cleaned up. It's just not accomplishing the task with what we have. Let's go up to 60 on our pump. All right, 
Let's have our shaver. Do you have the more aggressive shaver? I think we need that now. Thanks. Thanks. All right, we're still trying to clean off the front of the shoulder so we have a view. And that's not the place to be. Bring the mayo stand up to here, please. Okay, right there. And then give me just a little traction on it, please. Uh, this is all uh, fibrous thickening of the bursa subacromial space because of a uh, more recent injury. Let's have the radio frequency device, please. Okay. Well, he's definitely gone on to have a full thickness rotator cuff tear because that's all off the edge. And we're going to have to find the other part of his rotator cuff because it's somewhere in the back. It moved somewhere. There's a little tissue here. His biceps tendon was there. He definitely had a subsequent injury to the MRI that we have available. We're going to have to release a little bit of his capsule to get this mobile. Yep, he likes to jump there. We're just close to the cuff. He's getting some conduction of that all the way down into his biceps. Oh, 
Okay. That's going to be interesting. Let's see how that all turns out. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's keep cleaning up here. And do you have a burr ready? Let's go ahead and get that loaded up. Okay, so that's his edge of his acromion, solid uh, type two acromion there. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that up. It's right on the area where we're operate where we're trying to fix his cuff. So we're gonna try to take that down a little bit. Yeah. So <coughs> with the acromion, uh, for many years, for more than 50 years. It's been felt that the biggest problem with the acromion is the anterior part of the acromion extending slightly lateral. However, most of the recent research looking at the risk of rotator cuff tears and even more significantly the risk of tearing of the rotator cuff after surgery is related to the lateral edge of the acromion. And the critical angle of the acromion when it's very steep, in other words, it hangs over seems to increase the risk of rotator cuff disease. So since that seems to be the more important part of the acromion to manage, to avoid further rotator cuff problems, I like to start from this position looking from behind and working from lateral to medial to make sure that I lift up that lateral edge and change the critical angle of the acromion so it's less likely or in a, in a range that is not associated with an increased risk of rotator cuff tears. And then what we do is we'll switch and we'll come from the view from the lateral side and then use the posterior slope of the acromion to flatten out the acromion once we've already managed the lateral component. So we're pretty close to that now and we can once we get pretty close to the finalizing that we'll go ahead and take out some of the bone debris that we see. And then we'll go ahead and take the shaver now and we'll switch from the posterior to the lateral portal so we get a sideline view of everything that's going on. And again, I really am not excited about the view that we have. This is terrible imaging. Is this the aggressive shaver? Yeah, let me have the more aggressive one, please. I'm just getting a lot of stuff in here, but. This went from a slam dunk, easy uh, versatile sided tear to one that's going to be tricky uh, and may have a hard time getting it all the way back, interestingly. Yep. All right, take this for me. Let me have the Arthur care over the top and then switch to the burr.
right. Make us work harder here. This is the spine of the scapula, so that kind of tells us where the supra and infraspinatus is at. So we'll identify those two planes, and then as we come forward, we'll find the AC joint. The front edge of the acromion is here. So let's go ahead and finalize our flattening of the acromion. So once we've taken off the lateral edge, then we'll come from posterior and we'll use the cutting block technique to finalize the acromioplasty. Trying to make that a perfectly flat surface or as close as we can. Shaver, please. Let's have the arthrocare. Can we go up to 70 on the pump, please? something. Okay, let's see who we got down below us here. these things to clean stop bleeding on me all right let's see a uh, kingfisher please wow this is just not good Well, that's where it's supposed to be. So that's kind of a, it's the uh, reverse L-shaped tear. Uh, it's off the edge, but it's mostly, if you look here, it's mostly tendon to tendon. It's not tendon to bone. And it just comes off this bony edge right here, and then it's split through the tendon, which is uh, not ideal in terms of a healing process, but that's what we have to try to repair. So it goes down like that, and that would be 
that's what we have to try to accomplish for this guy. I've already loosened him up a little bit here. Let's see what we have for, let's have the Arthur care again. But give me the, that back, yep. I'm gonna have to split his rotator interval a little bit here. Let's see where the Supra lives and dies. So the coracoid's there. It's gotta come through here. So we have a thickening of this tissue anteriorly, and this is kind of restricting us, so we're gonna have to do a split between his rotator interval so I can move the tissue over far enough to get a surgical repair. That's his coracoid process. And that should get the anterior edge of his supraspinatus to move a little better for us. And arm's gonna start jumping again. Like that. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can get over here and get this prepared. Biceps is right there, okay. Open up uh, speed bridge. So we're still gonna go for a double row repair here. We might have to diagonal it a little bit to fit the tear pattern. But this is the footprint of the leading edge of the supraspinatus. And so this is what we're gonna have to get it back to. Let's have the burr when you get a chance. Just going to prepare the tuberosity footprint here. So when we prepare the tuberosity, the things that have been associated with better healing include uh, just lightly scuffing the bone and not going through uh, the, the bone all the way down into the cancellous bone, but leaving uh, enough of the <coughs> subcortical bone so that it, the anchors hold very nicely. Other things that have been associated with it has been putting small holes uh, into the bone itself uh, to try to get the blood supply to improve. And so there's some evidence that works. But I think the most important thing is to make sure that we roughen up the bone so it gets some petechial bleeding especially in a younger person where we think the blood supply is still gonna be very good, and then maintain the quality of the strength of the bone by not going too deep so the anchors will hold very nicely for us. Let's have our shaver for a second, please. I need another cannula. Do you have a purple cannula? Okay, I'll take an 18 gauge needle. So we wanna get a good angle here. All right, go ahead and take the needle. This is right off the anterior edge of the Footprint, so we want to be up here at the anterior superior portal. Take knife back. Okay, can I have the cannula now, please?
Okay, so we've we prepared the tuberosity. Now we're going to take a mallet, please. Debbie, just tap this gently. I mean, we're just one at a time. We just want to go down to the little. Just so just watch the screen hit it. Keep going. You go down to all the more and more, all the way down to the first one. Okay, stop. So we're going to put some holes in the bone here to try to improve our blood supply. Okay, good. Again. Keep going, keep going. Okay, good. Again. Harder. harder. Hit it, hit it. Okay. Again. Okay. One more. Okay. If we're lucky, we can see sometimes once we've done that, we can turn our flow off and turn a little bit of suction on and we should see the bone marrow coming up through the holes, hopefully. There are some. That's kind of creeping up there. There we go. There we go. So we can show we got some good blood supply there. Okay. Okay. So let's have that kingfisher. Just make sure we're happy with that coming all the way over because it's really we're kind of repairing almost on the side here. So that's the corner. Got to find the right corner here. And that's not the corner, it's a little higher. This is the corner. And that's got a lot, it's got to get a little work done. And then we can do side to side once we get it over. But that's what we have to do. Okay. All right, so let's have our first punch. We And we have got our corkscrew ready, right? We've got our, excuse me, our, our uh, speed bridge, yep. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, Deb, go ahead. It's got to go to the second line. Yes. Push back so you don't hit the patient's head. You push with your other hand and then hit. You're stepping on the shaver. down it's got to be buried okay a little more okay good stop we take it down so there's two there's a um, an older anchor which is the FL and then the swivel lock is the SL so we take it down to the SL line so that that'll be seated properly hold Chris hold the scope for me mallet please just hold it right there go ahead tap it all right it's good And let's take a lasso to the left, please. And then we want to bury our anchor so it goes down at least level to the uh, surface that we've prepared. We don't want it to be prominent beyond that point. Okay. And Chris, could you go ahead and give me one of those 8.25 millimeter cannulas now? All right, let's go ahead and get that set up. Kingfisher, please. Last solo is coming up, I think, right? So as is typical with rotator cuff tears, they don't tear just from lateral to medial, but they also roll off the back or posterior. And that's what we're witnessing here. And so the supraspinatus is rolled back with the infraspinatus, and this is what has to come all the way over. So really, so just 
pull forward like this for me on the Kingfisher. Got to pull harder than that. Pull harder than that. Right there. Okay. And we've got to get that back in that tissue there. Then we'll take the uh, crab claw in just a minute. We're going to come back here to get this tissue to move forward. Crab claw. And we'll pass this, uh, hold the scope for me, just reach up and hold it, just support it. We've got our tape that we can pass through here. Okay, take that. Okay, so that'll be our first one. Take that back, okay, and you can let go of that. And let's have our punch now, please. We'll put our second anchor in. Go ahead. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, good. Okay, we'll take our second anchor. Do we have our rhodium patch? Oh, yes. Go ahead and open that up too. Wicky, the patch, please. Or wick. Go ahead and tap that down a little bit. Okay, screw it in. Okay, good. So just a little more, just one more turn. Okay, good. Take that off. We'll leave that in. Take that. Okay. Let's have our um, lasso. Just want to make sure we're going through a comfortable spot here. I don't want to capture the other suture, so I just have to work around it a little bit. There we go. And so uh, hold the scope for a second. And let me just see where this goes. Nope, got to hold the scope. Where I put it, there, put it right there. So we want to come out of here. Uh, yeah, it's probably about right. We got a side to side out there. Okay, let me have the uh, suture retriever. Yeah, we'll just uh, hold there. Let me have the um, fiber tape retriever, please. All right, let's pull this out here so we don't have any confusion. Take that fiber tape retriever, thank you. Load the fiber tape into this wire loop in just a second. Is that both of them? No. Second one. Okay, load the end of that in the wire loop. So uh, we're taking the fiber tape, which is a swedge together, two fiber tapes, and we're passing it through the wire loop so that we can put it into the rotator cuff tendon. Yeah, hang on a second. I'm not, I thought I had a better bite. Let's start over. Take that out. Take that out. Take the wire loop out. Yeah, let me just, uh, it looks like it creeped uh, over while we were getting that set up. Okay, so hold the scope again, please. Kingfisher. That wasn't really good tissue that we had there at the end, which I don't want to 
have to deal with. So that's the muscle tendon junction. There's only so much we can do. So it may just be what we have. That's going to be a little bit better. So once we pull the fire loop, uh, the wire, the uh, wire through the proper part of the tissue, then we can pull our tape back through that area, and this will be our medial row for our double row repair. Okay. Now, a couple things. One is that there's a fair amount of tension here, so some of that has to do with the way this has been torn. So we're going to try to reduce that by giving us a help stitch here. So let's uh, give our lasso again and find a number two fiber wire or get one for us. Got to make sure I'm not gathering the biceps. The biceps should be below us here. Suture retriever. Okay, uh, number two fiber wire. Pass the wire through, pass the fiber wire through this wire loop. Hang on. Okay, pass it through. Okay. Okay, let go, let go. Okay, take that. Okay, and then Kingfisher. And then I'll need the lasso back again. Hold the scope for me, right there. Hold it there. Okay, let's have the uh, so. Okay, the uh, suture retriever. And we're going to try to bring this uh, number two fiber wire in a side to side stitch to kind of bring things together. So just to make sure they're not tangled, we'll go back in, grab the two of them together, and then slide back out. And that should make sure that they're away from the other stitches. Hold the scope for me. And this will help to reduce our, rep our tear into a better position. But before we do that, we're going to try to slide the rhodium patch in there just to add to the complexity of our repair. So take that back. And let's have the suture retriever again, please. Hemostat. Okay, put it on these two guys. So that gets us pretty close to being in a reduced position, uh, which will help us out when we go to get our final repair. The white stitch is here, so we're good with that. And we've got that passed well. But we want to make sure we get everything squared away here. So <coughs> are you uh, open you're opening up the rhodium, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, ideally, if you have a scorpion punch, that'd be great. Hold the scope. And uh, we have a, a sponge or a wick that can hold on to the, soft, the, the uh, biologically active materials that we're going to put down in between. 
and it'll spread over the area and it'll be a little bit too big or awkward, but we can just trim back the edges. We just want to have it in the space because what it does is like some people have used a, a mega clot, other people have used fibrinogen glue, uh, but something to hold the biologically active materials in place. And actually probably the best thing is this synthetic fiber uh, that works uh, very well, made out of banana fiber. And uh, we just have to kind of pull it down into place. And we just kind of uh, will slide it down the two edges here. Hold this, please. This is just to kind of hold it in the general region there. All right, I know I got in your way. Let's have a knot pusher. Right there. Knot pusher. Thank you. And so we're just going to push this down so it'll be an interposition graft. It's made out of a nanofiber that's synthetic and it gradually dissolves. But again, while it's there, it holds on to the biologically active materials. Thank you. Yeah, we'll just lay that down there for a minute. So we can get that to, okay, let's have the uh, let's have the uh, um, crab claw. Thank you. And we're just going to, again, we just want to make it an inner position graph, so we're just going to lay it down in this area. And we'll go right over the top of it, and we'll trim off whatever is excessive or too big, but this will kind of help hold it in place for us. And we've got these other little sutures here that we can also incorporate that a little bit into our repair. So <coughs> let's have now uh, the, um, uh, the uh, lasso. Crab claw, hold the scope, hold the scope. Thank you. Okay. Nope. Back up a little bit, back up. Okay, take that. I should pull that through. It's okay. It's all good. Okay, take that. Sorry, so I came on down there. Grab that. Thank you. Crab claw. Okay, and then let's have the. Uh, Lasso, my fault. Yep, load that for me. And we'll start s repairing everything just a second here, sewing it back together.
Okay, suture retriever. Crab claw, I got in the back, sorry. And then put the blue suture that's in this cannula through this loop in just a second here. Okay, put it through there. Got it, okay. So we gotta just make sure we don't tangle it up with all our sutures. We're gonna put that underneath the other one. Hold this, hold this please. Okay. Okay, good. Suture retriever. I think I can leave that alone. I just got to get this other one out of the way. So what I want to do now is I want to repair this one back to this one so we can get those holding together. And I think we, uh, we just have to pull those out of the same cannula. So let's go back down here and tie that. So that'll be this one and this one. Okay, take the hemostat off, please. Hold the scope. You're going to have to get off the mail stand because I've got to raise it up. Okay, that'll give me a little less distance. Here. Okay, not pusher. And this is again just a side to side stitch to kind of get us close like that and then we'll put our double row over the top and so that'll have all the tissue in the right spot Okay, we'll have that uh, suture cutter, please. The closed ended one is fine. Okay. And then we'll take a suture retriever again in just a second. Okay. Hold it right there. Hold the scope. Not pusher. The um, uh, crab claw. Crab claw. Okay, that's not going to work there. Okay, it's fine. You don't have 
have to. Okay, like the same cutter. And then I, uh, yeah, I can use the same one, it's fine. Okay, so this gives us sort of a pr provisional anterior placement of our cuff, and which is close to where we want it to be, and now we've got to do our double row laterally over the footprint to secure that down. Let's have a shaver just to kind of clean up our space a little bit. Let's hand it this way. Thank you. Just uh, okay. All right, good. Take that back. To hold the scope, please. Let's have that open end cutter. So these uh, fiber tapes were one. And we're going to cut th the end of the swedge so that there'll be two, so that we can then do a diagonal over the top and a final speed bridge. So we'll cut those off. So now we have two white tails. And we'll do the same for the blue. And then we'll separate them out inside so that they go in the proper alignment. Okay. And let's have a fiber tape retriever. So we have a, a blue and a white, the white up front. So we'll take one of our whites and just pull that out the front. And we're about ready to put our lateral anchors in place. We'll move that one out of the way. Then we'll go lateral or medial to this and grab the other blue. So it's just out of our way and not captured in our repair, if I can find it. And he's here somewhere further back than I expected, so just kind of trapped over the top. There we go. So this will be our front anchor. And since that's pretty much ready to go, let's just see if we can pull those guys here, pull those guys here. And we kind of know where that needs to go off this edge here. So let's go ahead and have our uh, fiber tape retriever one more time. I think this will be a much better angle. Yep. And we'll come through here. And let's go ahead and load up our anchor. Can we load up our anchor? Good. And then pull that. And I'll put a hemostat on that end. Thank you. And then just set that down. Good. And let's just lower this just a little bit so I can see that corner. There we go. And let's get our white one out of the way. So the fiber tape retriever again, please. So we don't want it to be trapped by the blue, so we got to pull the white one out from underneath. Do our somersault. There we go. All right, so that's out of the way. And then we just want to have this here, a good position at that front edge. We want to make sure we come all the way off that front edge of the super spinata, so that looks like about the right position. So we have our punch. And again, here's the front edge of our super spinatus right there. So we want to be to about right here. So let's just uh, rotate this back a little bit. Chris, let's go right here. Hold it right there. Yep. And we just don't want to go too far off that front edge. So let's go right down the leading edge. And uh, that should be a good spot for us right there. So go ahead and hit that. 
Chris, I'm going to have you grab the scope in a second. Okay, that looks good. All the way down to the swivel lock line. And our anchor is ready to go. We'll hold the scope there for me. And we'll take the anchor that we just loaded and immediately go into our position so we don't lose that. Over the top of the rhodium. Hang on, hang on. Let me just get a little tension in there. We tension that a little bit. Go ahead and tap that. Go ahead. Harder. Harder. Keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. Hold it there. Back up just a little bit. Yeah, you're good. Want to get that down just to the cortical rim. Take the stitch out. Open-ended fiber tape cutter. If you've still got that, that's great. Thank you. Feed that through. Okay, good. So that's that. A nice solid repair at that front corner. Now we have to reinforce it with our double row. So we'll turn that back around a little bit. Let's have the fiber tape retriever. And we'll get our next uh, swivel lock anchor ready to go. Got the white. We got the other blue. We got to find him in the back. Again, hiding back here. There we go. Get okay, both those guys out. And we'll hit that corner right there and we'll have a nice crisscross over the top of it. And we'll take the punch after you get that. Oh, sorry, thanks. Go ahead. Good. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right, great. And then we'll take the punch now. So we look at the back end of the tear, which is about right here. So our blue stitch is going to come over that partially. Where is our blue stitch? It's already a little further back, so we'll have to come uh, right here. So a little bit of that diagonal I was talking about. So there's the top. There's the edge there. Okay, go ahead. Good hard bone. One more. Okay, Chris, hold that. How's that look? Got the blue there. We got the white over the top. That looks pretty good. Okay, go ahead and tap that in. No more, good. Find the open-ended cutter. Okay, thank you. All right, let's have a shaver. My fault, I can use the other one. Just give me the smaller one. Just give me the small one for now. He just dropped it. Go this way, like which is the way we always do it. Whenever we got a routine, <laughs> something happens, right? So we have a little bit of the rhodium patch sticking out, and so just so it doesn't cause any flap or catch, we'll just trim that back to the edge of the tendon. 
repair, so it's not an issue. Got most of it done there. We got a nice solid repair over the top. Double row out to the tuberosity, so that looks good. It's a good chance of healing in a 48 year old. Yeah, I'm going to clean up just a little more of that rhodium. Oh, I hit some a little bleeder in the back. Take that for a second. I got to go over with the shaver from the front, but give me that. And then we just have to finish up with the biceps and we're all set. Okay, so let's come with a shaver in the front. Do you have that orange cannula? Give me that orange one. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, it should work pretty good. Come on, get that edge here. There we go. So Chris, now you understand what we do, right, with that rhodium? So it sits right in there. It's a sponge. It's just going to hold everything together. And then this is what it looks like when we're done. We'll do a video. See that all holds together as one solid piece. Comes over nicely. It's filled that whole gap where it was torn off the front edge. We've got a little bit of a lump there. We'll see if we can trim it down a little bit for her. Not sure I can, to be honest with you, without causing more harm. But we'll see if we can. Yeah, yeah. It'll flatten out, I'm sure. So again, we'll just do that. Yeah, it's not too bad there. So good. All right. So let's just find the biceps to make sure it's freed up. Shaver. Got it. So let's get down the front here. I'm just a little... Sometimes when we do a lot of work at that front corner, I get worried that I may have trapped the bicep. So I want to make sure the biceps tendon comes out before I go in the subacromial space. I don't want to rip anything. So we'll just find it real quickly down here. So we go over the front edge of the shoulder, the subscapularis, and we work our way down. We start to see the, and off in the distance, the short head of the biceps. And then we can find out as we come out lateral, the pec tendon. We have to raise this arm a little bit this way. And we'll just clean this up a little here. And our bicep tendon should be right in this region here as we come on down. That's my pec tendon. Bicep tendon should be right here. Okay, let's have the ortho care. See where we can find our biceps. Sorry. 
Maybe just a little bit there. I, I know he's right here. I just got to. Okay, our biceps is free. So then we don't have to worry that that's trapped in the repair and that we might injure or, re or rip out our repair. And again, so we're, we make sure we have enough pictures here for the patient. Chromioplasty there. And then the biceps tendon over here. And then back to the repair. Okay, so let's get our biceps done and we're all set. Okay, marking pen. Do you have some local anesthetic? Okay. So our pec, ten, pec muscle comes here. And so our line is this. And we can feel our bicep groove. So what we'd like to do is go in line with one of the skin lines or Langer's lines right here at the lateral aspect of the axilla. And that'll bring us right down to the biceps into the subpectoral region. We'll numb up this skin because this is actually T1 uh, because it's the uh, lateral um, intercostal brachial nerve that comes off a T1. It's not part of the brachial plexus, so the patients can feel that even if they've had a block. Okay, we're making incision, two to three centimeters. And I um, just went through the iaband drape and not the skin. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, Mets, please. Take that. Just hold it there. So we come right down on the pack. So what we do is we actually aim to the lower part of the pack. And let's have an Army Navy, please. And we get into a fascial plane right here which is at the lower part of the pec, and the biceps tendon runs immediately underneath that in this region. So we'll take an Army Navy, and we'll slide this in here, come out with the sen, and just hold this just straight up there, just toe in a little bit. Toe in a little, you gotta pull hard with some force. Okay, so we lift up on the pack. And we see the biceps and the bice the uh, the um, <coughs> the biceps muscle of the short head of the biceps. And if we just stay right next to the pack and slide on down, then we'll get to the long head of the biceps. And sometimes it's easier to actually feel with your finger, so you know exactly where it's at, and not to get confused. I'll pull my finger out in just a second. Okay, let's get this here. Okay. Okay, so let's have a point at home in, please. The medium size. I'm gonna make this really straightforward to see. So we're going to put a home in here, and we're just going to go through the pack. And this is just, we, we don't have to do this, but this will give a much better view of what we're working on. And we just poke through the pack like that, and over the humerus, we can take this out now, and hold this up. And then we open this up here, and we'll get our water out, which is coming from our arthroscopic procedure. Okay.
So we have, that's the pec tendon. This is the biceps tendon, the biceps muscle. And as we go down in this region, we'll see right where the pec inserts is the bicepital groove and then next to that. So we have the pec pulled back, we have our arm and even here, and then uh, let's see if we can get a view in there. I can't see. I just can't tell because it's got water on it, you know. Um, can we do it? Oh, no, you really pretty much need this, so I think it just, how's, how's that look, a little better? Okay. Sure, so this is the pec tendon right here. This is the bicipital groove. And then this is the, uh, the short head is being pulled over. The biceps is in a bit of a sheath that's connected to the pec right here. As you can see, as I pull on that, there's the biceps right here. That's our biceps tendon. So it's right next to the pec, but here there's almost like a split sheath over the top of it. So we'll take the hemostat. Oh, I can take this, uh, yeah, thank you. And Deb's gonna pull back for a second, and we're gonna go down to the biceps, which is right here. And I think we can see that right next to the pec. And then, oops, and then as we kind of lift that out, there's our biceps tendon. And this is important to recognize how far down the biceps, that's all synovitis, all the way down to the upper part of the muscle, which is where the pec comes into play. So again, this is one of the reasons we often prefer the subpectoral biceps synodesis instead of the, um, instead of higher up because of all this extra synovitis that's seen and evident uh, on the biceps tendon. Yeah, all the way down to here. So we're gonna take this out to let that relax. And then uh, we're gonna just trim up the biceps. So hold this for a second. And then we'll just trim off some of this uh, inflammation we see right here. And then our goals in terms of our landmarks when we want to do our, our uh, actual reconstruction is we, we want to get the muscular portion of the biceps, which is right here, underneath our pec. You can see Deb is holding back on that. So this is where it needs to go to get that firmly into place. So again, what I need to do is I need to get that muscle to that level all the way up to there so that that will go into place. So we're now gonna take a fiber loop and we're gonna go to the top of it. So hold this here for me, Chris. We're just gonna have to do a little dance. Thank you. So slide that over. And I, at this point, pick the, the how far I wanna go down the biceps. So we'll pull on the biceps. We see the muscle is right here. We're gonna go just above that muscle tendon junction. And we'll slide through. Okay, Chris, take that. Okay. Nice big tendon. Switch, I got the arm. All right, we'll take a knife. Go ahead and cut this for me, Chris, right here. Let's cut that fiber wire. 
Thank you. I'm going to put the needle down, careful. And then having the knife back. And hold this up here. Hand me the knife, thank you. Great. All right, so now we're ready to fix our biceps tendon in the right position. So now we're gonna get reset. Here's again our landmarks if we look right in here. We'll follow us and there's our biceps tendon. As we come over the top and into the space that we're operating on, let me have something to mark with. We have the pec tendon is here on this side. This is our bicepital groove and that's our latissimus tendon right here. And we have a smooth retractor on both sides. So we'd like to put our biceps right in this hole here. So we'll take our, uh, shoot, I didn't mean to do that. We'll take our um, guide pin. I got this for a second, okay. I'll try to. Okay, good. Reamer. Got it. Mm hmm. 8 0. Get the suction out of there. Okay, good. Chris, can you hold this? Yeah. Okay. Better? Yep. Okay, we ream through the first cortex and no more reaming. We don't ream out. We don't want to widen the hole that we have. And we'll clean this out a little bit. Can you open up another rhodium patch? Thank you. So we're gonna put a, another patch around the biceps tendon, again, just to help hold on to all the biological healing properties that will go around it coming out from the bone marrow. And we just put this uh, kind of loosely, we'll, we'll pass it down with the biceps tendon once we get into the actual, um, um, uh, the vice tend to the position that we need to be. Okay, so all right, so let's uh, regroup here. All right, Chris. So the next thing we're going to need is the tap. So we have our rhodium patch ready to go. It's got a little smuts on here. We've got our rhodium patch ready to go. We're going to come on in right over the biceps, and then we've got this view. We're going to take our tap and. We want to tap the cortex just on the side, gently, like that. And we'll stay in the place, and that's good. Chris, I'm going to need your help. Now we're ready to insert the biceps into place, so I'm going to need you to try to hold on to the, um, uh, oh, we have to, let's load, let's load this first. Okay, so let's go to the sharpen, yeah. Let's so hang on to this end. Thank you. Okay, so we have the screw and the wire. So this, hold this right here, hold it up close to the, uh, the uh, surgical site. Yep. And we'll pass this through the loop. Maybe. Okay. And then pull on the wire, but as you pull, pull forward. Yep, great. Okay, good. And then we'll lock this in here, and then I need to add some pickups. Coming up. So we'll lock this on the O-ring, maybe. We'll clean out the suction here. We'll get our we'll get our scope working. You're going to do this, Chris. So I need you to kind of clean that there and just kind of hold it right like that, right? Is that good? Okay. So then I need to add some pickups. You you just worry about that. No, I got the rest. I got to just work around you. So hang on a second. Okay. So what we'd like to do is pass our patch down and we're going to go all the way in. I know the patch is in the way. I got it. I got it. And as we pass this through, 
will actually essentially punch right through the patch and put the biceps tendon right into the hole like that, but it's not enough. Not enough. We want to do better than that. I'll get it in. So you got to go over the top. So we're going to pa pass this down in there. And we're going to try to pass that right through the, there we go. Oh. Okay. So I just got to be able to advance this down, which is a, it's a big tendon, so it's going to take a little work. Okay. All right. So that's uh, what we have. So uh, now what we can see is that the muscle tendon junction is underneath the pack because we have one retractor on the pack. These are the sutures coming out. And once we let go of this tissue, uh, then it will cover uh, the muscular portion of the biceps and there'll be no gap. And therefore the patient will recognize as being normal for them. So we basically just have to cut our two sutures uh, and then this has come down. So we just let the pec relax. We can see how that'll sit right underneath the pec tendon uh, and a nice clean spot there. There's our pec tendon, we lift it up, we put it down, and it's gonna rest right over the top of our muscle tendon junction, and that'll be what the patient will see, and it'll be, n looks normal for them. So we're gonna cut our sutures, we'll be all set. Okay, we'll hold that there. We just need the open-ended cutter. Same thing we had before. Got this. That's our final closing view. I don't think there's much else to see there. If we haven't already seen, that looks pretty good. And we're all set. And we'll just take this and drop that over the top. Take that out. And then we'll take this out here. And that's our biceps. And we're on our way out. <laughs>